synagogue began filling up an hour early. Former Governor John Corzine and his wife were there. Two busloads of dignitaries dropped off 41 U.S. senators from around the country. Bonnie Engelbart Lautenberg, the senator's widow, welcomed Governor Christie. Hillary Clinton greeted a number of well-wishers, and Vice President Biden and his wife Jill hugged their late friend's wife. The eulogies were from a mix of family and political colleagues. Senator Bob Menendez called Lautenberg the most tenacious man he'd ever met and a true New Jerseyan. Frank Lautenberg was a man for his time, one of the greatest generation, the last in the Senate to have served in World War II. His story was an American story, but in his heart and for his lifetime, he was a man from New Jersey, a kid from Patterson. Lautenberg's children and grandchildren talked about his humor and boundless energy. Hillary Clinton called him a man of strong conviction who also championed women's rights. Barbara Mikulski, the longest serving woman in the Senate, has a phrase for those of our male colleagues who really go the extra mile on behalf of women. She calls them our Galahads. Frank was one of them. But he would have been the first to say he was doing it for his daughters. As Governor Christie and former Governor Jim McGreevy looked on, Vice President Biden spoke of numerous conversations with Lautenberg late last year over whether Lautenberg should run again. Well, I said, Frank, look, I, 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 I think you'll win again, you run again. Um, I think even Christie will vote for you. Uh, <laughs> go. Like him, Biden said, Lautenberg loved the Senate. It was clear to me he desperately, desperately wanted to run again. And I think the reason is not because he wanted to be senator. But your dad never quit. He never quit anything. Bonnie Lautenberg talked of her 25-year romance with a Renaissance man. He introduced me to presidents, heads of state, governors, senators, business leaders, union leaders, actors, directors, ordinary people who just came, always came up to him to thank him for his work, truck drivers, he loved them all and treated everyone with the same respect and warmth. The service lasted two and a half hours. The casket was then transported to the Frank R. Lautenberg Rail Station in Secaucus. From here, it will be transported on Amtrak to Washington lie in state on the Senate floor tomorrow, followed by burial at Arlington National Cemetery on Friday. Ironically, there may have been no stronger booster of Amtrak than the late Frank Lautenberg. For NJ Today, I'm Michael Aaron.